Hey, Facebook, Facebook, YouTube, all you guys. How you guys doing out there? Um, how to reach. Today, I want to talk about how to reach financial freedom sooner rather than later. Um, I got Facebook out there. I got YouTube out there. I got Twitter out there. I think I got IG out there. So I'm on a lot of different places, guys. And uh, welcome. Welcome to the uh, live stream today. We're going to talk about how to reach financial freedom sooner rather than later now let me just let me just say this before we get going and get started guys when i say how to reach financial freedom sooner rather than later that doesn't mean get rich quick okay i just want to be clear about that up front this channel right here this uh youtube channel right here is not about a, not about get rich quick okay if you're looking for the ten thousand dollar giveaway this ain't it Okay, if you're looking for the tw the the master class that costs you twenty thousand dollars, where you have to go and take out a loan uh, to come and watch me talk about something that you could have Googled in the first place, right? This ain't it, right? So this channel says, don't try to get rich quick. Handle your business with money. Handle your business with money, but be strategic with money, right? So we don't chase money on this YouTube channel, but we focus on money, right? We focus on money. We chase things like purpose, like talent, like gifts, so that we can ultimately monetize those things and make more money, right? But we don't chase after money. We put money in its right perspective. We put We don't put money above everything because money is not above everything. Money is not the most important thing. Um, but we do focus on money because we understand the principle that what you focus on will expand what you focus on will get better right so you got to focus on it but we're all about being intentional with money uh, on our financial journey to financial freedom and doing common sense things with money the common sense things with money that most people don't want to do or don't have the discipline to do right so again we're not getting rich quick uh, but we want to reach financial freedom sooner rather than later. And um, but money takes time, guys. Right. Wealth takes time. It takes patience, takes discipline. And it takes, you know, kind of less emotion than a lot of us try to assign to money, because when you're emotional with money, a lot of times you'll make wrong decisions with money. Right. If you do things out of anger or out of fear, those type of emotions make you do wrong things with money. So I want this to be sort of a dialogue, though, though guys. So um, I'd rather take more questions from you and answer them than uh, just rattle off a lot of things that I want to talk about. Smash. If you come in this, smash the like button for me. Right. Hit the like button. Share the link to the live. <clears throat> These things help push this video out to more and more people. And uh, just relax, right? Let's chill and let's have a little dialogue. Let me know in the comments, guys, what city are you in? If you're watching this on Facebook or on IG, you might want to go over to YouTube if you want. And uh, let me know what city you're in. I'm, I'm curious where you guys are. Let me know in the chat. I always like that feedback, right? Uh, feedback is good. Uh, okay, John, what up? All right. D. Simi, good morning. Ruben, good afternoon from... Florida. Good morning, bro. Uh, Lashes, Lashes Journey. Um, some of these names are rough on me, but I'm trying, right? Good afternoon from India. Hey, India, right on. Long way away, but I love it. Morning to you, Madison. Um, so true. Um, I'm glad to be in this live. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you found this channel. Uh, I really am. St. Petersburg, Florida checking in um if i missed a, a a question that you had up front guys feel free to drop it below good morning from southern cali right it never rains in southern california but i think it actually probably does um so glad to have you outside of chicago got a lot of family in chicago new york in the house austin austin texas and then we got California, Nigeria. Good to have you in here from Nigeria, Upper Michigan, uh, where it's about to get cold in a couple of months, I'm sure. New York City, Panama City, Florida. Good. Uh, Mr. JWK and uh, Ify or Ify is in New York City. East Texas. All right. Supers Farm. Good to have you here. Uh, Wilkins from Allentown, Pennsylvania, Steel Town. I think they call that Steel Town. Good morning from Hawkins, Wisconsin. The reason I love to know where you guys is from, because I used, I used to be a geography teacher. 
uh, back in the 1990s, long time ago. So I love to, uh, I, I get on Google Earth for fun, right? That's, I'm just a nerd like that, right? But uh, Hawkins, Wisconsin, from way up there, from St. Louis, not far from me, Texas. Hello from South Carolina, Elisa Gale B Bivines, Bivins from South Carolina. Good to have you there, all right? Uh, Geechee Gullah are out there on the east coast of South Carolina. Uh, South Africa's in the house. Good to have you. Brooklyn, New York. Boogie Down. Not Boogie Down. Sorry. That's the Bronx. My fault. Brooklyn. Ternice. Good to have you. Um, hello from San Antonio, Texas. Good to have you. Uh, the property buyer, Mylene Thomas from Jamaica. And then we got J&J &J from uh, Oakland. Good to see you. And then we got Central Wisconsin stepping in there. Good. So we're all over, guys. We got a lot of folks from a lot of places. So I hope you guys feel free to put some questions in the chat. You know, chat amongst yourselves, but put some questions in the chat. And let's have this conversation, guys, because um, it's a dialogue, right? Personal finance is personal, right? So you can, there are some things that are pretty, um, pretty common for everybody when it comes to money, right? You know, spend less than you make, um, you know, be very intentional with your money and, you know, make budgets, right? Those are universal things that everybody should do. But finances is, per you know, personal finances is personal. How things are handled in South Africa is a little different than handle things might be handled in St. Louis, Missouri, right? So everything is, is relevant to you and your own personal situation. So, if you have a question in the chat, please put in there and we can get to it and we can have some conversation. I got a few things that I wouldn't mind talking about, but uh, I want to hear from you guys. Um, it was 39 already in Upper Michigan, says Jesse. All right. Hey, it was uh, that's yeah, it's about to get got about to get funky up there. Funky in a cold way. Um, let's see. Uh, I got I worked at Walmart and got a got to fire. Fantastic. I love that. Um, Miss Journey said that. Uh, should we invest or pay off debt? OK, let me let me start. Let me just start jumping in with some of the questions because like they're coming in, guys. So uh, opinions of the debt relief programs, my opinions of debt relief. They're fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Take advantage of it. If they're if it's offered to you, I don't have a problem with it. I can share this with you. Um, we got out of student loan debt about three months ago. I was in student loan debt for a long time. I could have paid it off before, but I paid it off slower. But I just got out of totally out of debt. I went ahead, even even though the uh, moratorium in America was you don't have to pay your debts during the pandemic. I went ahead and paid mine and paid off my student loans. Um, so I don't mind the debt relief programs. Take advantage of what you can take advantage of. Right. But don't just rely on this on the debt relief programs for as your whole plan, because what you're doing is you're putting things in the hand of somebody else when your debt should really be in the hands of you to pay it off. So I see a lot of different sides of the argument. I don't see anything wrong with it at all. Get get the debt relief if they give it to you, but use it to your advantage. Right. Don't just use the debt relief pay payoff program. And then next thing you know, you're back in a whole bunch of debt six, six years later. Right. Use it for what it is. And then use it to really better your situation and not just as some temporary relief. Right. Um, so that's my opinion of it. Should we invest or pay off debt? Um, when you pay off debt, you're sort of like investing. Right. I'm a guy that says do your best to get rid of your debt because your debt is your liability side of the equation. Right. I look at net worth assets versus liability. Why have a million dollars in liability and three hundred dollars in assets and think you're balling be careful with that you're not balling because if you owe money you really don't have money you 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 owe money right so you got to pay that money so um i think there's nothing wrong with debt now i don't now here's my thing if you have let's say a 401k at your job where they can match a little bit of it you know i i say always get that match Right. Always get that match and still pay off debt at the same time. Um, I'm not a guy that says and I know one of my one of my guys that I, I've listened to for a long time. and I know a lot of people listen to. They say stop everything and pay off all your debt. I don't really believe that. OK, I believe that you should at least consider uh, investing a little bit as you go along, even though you're working on paying off debt. Johannesburg, South Africa in the house. Good to have you uh, squash. Right. Uh, where to invest a hundred bucks a month is, is a question. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me go back up. All right. Um, started investing in real estate six years ago. Best decision. Miss journey. Fantastic. 
Yes, I'm a real estate guy, guys. Back in 2000, I started investing in real estate and half my, I say a little less than half my portfolio right now is real estate, right? I still have a few rental rental properties that I manage. Um, and I can, you know, I can one day, one Saturday coming up soon, I'm going to do a whole hour, hour and a half on, on investing in real estate, how to get started, how to manage your properties, how not to manage your properties, et cetera, and go through all that. So you guys hope you stay tuned to this channel for that. Smash that like button. Don't forget, guys, um, share this video right now with somebody and uh, let's continue here. All right. Best ways to build wealth or grow your assets. We're going to get into that here in a little bit. So, yeah, good question, Luke. I appreciate it. We're going to talk about that. Late to investing and saving. If older, where should you begin to catch on fire? Carol asks. Listen, Carol, you're never too old to start, right? You're never too, I don't care if you're 55, 60 years old, you can still invest money and still grow that money. Um, best way to do is get your house in order first, though. Make sure your house is in order, right? When, when I say your house is in order, I always compare uh, building wealth to having a house and taking care of your house like a business, right? In other words, make sure that you have your, your um, monthly income and expenses are controlled, right? Your behavior with money is controlled. Make sure you're, um, you know, you've looked at your, 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 your net worth assets, liability. Now start investing a little bit, but in the meantime, while you're investing a little bit, like I said earlier, is, you know, start with 5% of your money, 3%, 8%, whatever. But while you're doing that, make sure you're getting your house in order in terms of having your building, your strong foundation with money. Um, but, you know, open up a brokerage account. I always say the market is good. Market is a good place to, to invest because, um, it's, uh, you know, ultimately, guys, all businesses in America won't fail all at once. So being in the stock market is a good place to invest your hundred dollars or where to start. All right, Carol. Um, you're welcome. All right. Boom. I have ten thousand seven hundred dollars left in car payments to be debt free. Maybe seven months left coming off a total of one hundred sixty three thousand. Congratulations, Lauren. You've done a wonderful job. Pat yourself on the back. As soon as you make that last car payment, go take yourself out to the most expensive restaurant in the city and enjoy yourself. All right. Because you did a great job. Fantastic. Um, mommy says, hey, friends, glad to catch you live. Hey, I'm glad to have you, Mommy Trader. Good to be, see you in here. And let's have this conversation. Other than investing in index funds, Ruben says, what are your thoughts to preserve value of money in silver and gold? I don't see a big problem with diversifying your money. OK. And when I say diversify. Silver and gold is not horrible. All right. I'm not one of these guys that are totally against having some type of silver or gold. I'm, I'm all for diversifying. I now I don't want you to put 80 percent of your money in silver and gold. I would not do that. Right. I'd have a I'd have a small portion, tiny portion into something like silver and gold. But I'd also have some cash. I'd also have some real estate. I'd also have be in the stock market. Right. So you're, you're spread around a little bit. Let me give you an example. Spread around a little bit, guys. Uh, just because you asked that question. I appreciate that question. Last year, 2022, stock market was down, what, 18, 19, 20 percent, right? 2022. But real estate, you know, because I had some real estate, my real estate was up, you know, uh, 15, 12, 15 percent, maybe 18 percent. So my real estate was up when the stock market was down because I'm diversified. So my thing is, Yes, it's okay to have a, a tiny bit of your money here and a tiny bit here and have, you know, a nice chunk here and a nice chunk there, but you're you're hedging yourself against risk or your risk, you're hedging yourself against problems and issues that might come up. So I'm I'm okay with that, right? Just small portions here and there so you can spread around your risk, right? So um uh Jesse, I did I did have a house sold sold it in 2021 when the market skyrocketed, came out over the top, got debt free and bought land. Congratulations, Jesse. Love to hear it. Love those success stories because, you know, a lot of times we don't get a lot of those uh, success stories uh, from regular normal people that aren't sitting on IG. Right. Um, a lot of sacrifice, but it was worth it. Fantastic, Jesse. I, I appreciate you sharing that. So, guys, let me just kind of jump in here and talk about financial freedom just a little bit. I'll get back to some of the Q&A in just a moment. But to me, in my opinion, guys, we got to determine what is financial freedom? Okay. What does financial freedom look like to you? Right. Again, personal finance is personal. Now, in my opinion, um, financial freedom is more of um, you being able to choose and, and have choices with what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it, for how long you want to do it. Right. Financial freedom, in my opinion, is about not just choices, but it's about 
a feeling of security and safety, right? Financially. And again, you have to answer this question for yourself because you're look you're looking for financial freedom. You're not looking for everybody else's definition of financial freedom. Define it for yourself, right? For some of you, it may mean like a couple of testimonies right there in the in the uh, chat. It might just mean getting debt free and having the choice to choose to go out and buy some land or the choice to choose and go on vacation for two or three weeks or a month, two or three months, whatever it may be, right? What does financial freedom look like to you? For me, it's choices, it's feeling secure, it's maybe no debt. Um, and if you don't wanna work, you don't have to work, right? And you have a net worth that can sustain you um, for the rest of your life or for however long you need it, right? Financial freedom doesn't mean just sitting around the house watching, you know, Price is Right and watching your stories and your, your your daytime stories and, you know, and watching The View and all that, right? That's not necessarily financial freedom to a lot of people because we all have this need to do something. I talk to a lot of people that are retired. And one of the main things they tell me is that after I'm sitting around the house for two, three months, I'm bored. And the reason people get bored so quick is because they want to do something. You're built to do something, right? I always say this, guys. We are built to be builders. We're created to be creators, right? And so we need to get up and do something. So financial freedom doesn't mean doing nothing. It just means doing what you choose to do, right? And trust me, guys, when I tell you this, at least in America, because that's the only place I've lived, most people, they ain't free. I don't know if I said that right, but I'm going to say it again. Most people, they ain't nowhere near free, okay? Most Americans are not free when it comes to money. Debt is eating Americans alive. And that's why I said, hey, I'm all for getting out of debt, right? Because a lot of people, debt destroys them. And it doesn't just destroy them financially. It destroys them with stress, with anxiety, and it keeps them really in bondage, right? Because you got to keep working because you got to keep making payments, right? Debt can be depressing and it can be, it can box you in, right? Like have handcuffs on you or whatever. But as long as you have a lot of debt hanging around your neck, I don't think you'll truly ever really reach financial freedom, right? It may feel good. You may make a lot of money, right? But I don't think you're necessarily going to reach financial freedom if you have a bunch of debt. Now, according to, and I, I just looked up something, I'm going to read it to you guys. According to, I think something I read on Motley Fool, American households carry about $17 trillion of debt um, as of the summer of 2023, right? And the average household debt, they said total was around over $100,000 at the end of last year. So debt is a killer, right? You don't want to be, you know, you know, hampered by debt. So when we talk about financial freedom and what it takes to reach financial freedom sooner than later, you know, you got to ask yourself, what is it? What is financial freedom like to me? And uh, well, let me look. Let me let me go over here and, and look in the in the deal. See if you guys are asking any questions. So I did say ask questions earlier. Again, don't forget to smash the like button, guys. Um, okay, cool. Uh, it's never too late. Good. Um, I had to. Okay. Uh, Jesse said had to live a, in a camper for a year. He's talking to her. Okay, good. I didn't know you were doing lives now. Wonderful. You give good. Thank you, Twyla. I appreciate it. Those are kind words. I appreciate you. Um, yes, we are all given, uh, Althea, Althea said, we are all given gifts and talents to use, and that journey does not end with age. Amen to that. It sure doesn't end with age. Sometimes it gets better with age, right? I'm about to, Zanel said, I'm about to finish paying off my house. Is was is it wise to sell or make surety on my house to start a business? Um, totally depends on you. Uh, that's a question, Zanel, we might want to dig deeper into. Um, I do one-on-ones, by the way. Matter of fact, I do, I, let me just tell you guys this. I do free 15-minute one-on-ones just to have a conversation with anybody, just to help you with your finances. Not a big deal. Now, I do paid, you know, one-on-ones that for an hour and a half, we get on the Zoom and we might share screens and all that good stuff. But um, that's that's a little deeper question. I got to know more about you, Althea. I'm sorry, I got to know more about you, Zanel. Uh, I'm about to finish paying off my house. What does the rest of your financial situation look like? That makes a big difference on where you should go and what you should do. What do you want five years down the road, 10 years down the road? That makes a big difference on what you should do right now, right? You want to make decisions with your money today, thinking about your future, okay? Um, somebody else said, oh, Mark said, do you use a budgeting software? Listen to me closely, Mark. That would be a resounding zero. 
I don't use any budgeting software. Don't use YNAB. Don't use it. Now, some people love it. Some people like it. I'm old school. Listen, I'm so old school. I got one of these phones, right? I'm an old school guy. So I use, look, I got a pen in my hand. I, I write. I use pencil and paper, right? I don't I don't get off into too much budgeting software. I, for, I did a budget straight through from 1992 to 2017 on, on, on pencil and paper. Pencil and paper. Call me weird. Call me old. Whatever you want to call me. But guess what? It works. So, again, I don't necessarily use budgeting softwares. And if they do work for you, I'm all for them. Right. Give it a shot. You do what works for you. But for me, I just don't have to. I like ad and I like still carrying the one and all that good stuff. So. Um, so thanks. Righteous and masculine. Appreciate it. My brother. Keep it coming. Um, which investing platform? I don't use any, like I said, how to raise credit scores without buying a credit card. Uh, good question. If you rent a property, maybe you talk to your landlord about reporting that. There's a, there's a lot of different ways. As you guys may know, I'm not a big credit guy and repair credit type person, right? I believe in paying your bills and paying your bills on time, but I'm not really going to teach you how to repair credit and all that because I haven't used credit. I haven't bought a piece of property in probably a decade maybe more than a decade, but I haven't used credit in a long time. Let me, let me give you a little secret about me so you guys know something about me. I don't even know what my credit score is. I don't, I don't, I don't buy things on credit. I don't use credit cards. I haven't used a credit card since about 2011, 2011 or 20, maybe 2010 or 11. I don't use credit. I don't teach how to build credit. I teach your behaviors with money. And listen, if you change your behaviors with money, your credit's going to get better automatically. Right. I pay all my bills because not because I want to boost my credit. I pay all my bills because it's the right thing to do. And I pay them on time because it's the right thing to do. I probably got a good credit score more, more than likely because I do have some rental properties that uh, have mortgages. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know what my credit score is. I don't I'm not sure about I do have a I knew I do know a little bit about credit, but I don't go too much into it on this channel. Um, sometimes we find our li ourselves lost in debt. Unhappy. You ain't lying, Lauren Stern. Um, I owe the bank one million and I sleep good at night. You have good and bad debts. L J Miss Journey, you're right about that. There is debt on depreciating items is much worse than debt on appreciating items things going up in value so that that's that's true good point um i'm uh matt c said i'm at the beginning of my savings journey it gets tough sometimes what kept motivating you through your savings here's um what motivated me that's a great question matt c what motivated me really was having a plan a long-term plan being able to see out into the into 15 20 years down the road and see where i wanted to be um let me just tell you guys this about money real quick if if you if you're unable to see what's going to happen in five or 10 or 15 years with money, um, then you're going to have a hard time staying focused and building money today. Um, so just keep that in mind. You want to have a vision when you're getting your when you're working on your money and you want to hold on to that vision when the times get tough, when you don't feel like uh, putting money to the side, when you want to take that money and go on that vacation. Um, I'm not saying don't go on vacation, but I'm saying you got to keep the bigger picture in mind, the long journey, right? Keep 15 years down the road. You might be 40 years old today. Where do you want to be when you're 55? If you want to be sitting on the beach in Cancun somewhere, then you got to make some sacrifices today at 40, today at 45 um, to get there. So, you know, keep that in mind. That's one thing that kept me going throughout that, that time. Um, I use pencil and paper too. Sabrina, I ain't mad at you at all. CLM, thanks. You pre I appreciate you. Um, I, you. Now, let me just say this. I do do a budget on, on a Google Sheet, okay? Since about 2017, I started doing budgets on a Google Sheet, which is super duper simple. It's just a spreadsheet. And I don't use anybody else's template. I don't use a budgeting template because budgeting templates they always have to be altered and changed and you got to move this around and move that around. I just do my own template, which is just income expenses. Keep it simple, right? Doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have mine ain't even color coded, right? I just do it real basic, but um, you know, so I only have real estate debt. Fantastic. Uh, nothing wrong with that. If it's going up in value, that's cool. Especially if you have real estate debt on appreciating uh, income producing real estate that gives you payment every month. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's what I have too. Um, appreciate it. Uh, I use spreadsheet for managing our finances. Fantastic. I'm just reading through the questions guys and see if I can answer a few since this is a Q and a, um, 
Sid said, we need more men like you. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Is it weird to track uh, net worth every day? Mark said, um, nothing is weird. Okay. I don't want to say it's weird. It is different, right? If your net worth is changing every day, that means you have some real volatility. I don't check my net. I check my net worth about two to three times a year. That's it. Cause I don't want to sit there and numbers watch. I don't want to have a big screen here and a big screen here and a big screen here. And I'm sitting around here like I'm at NASA looking at all the monitors to see what's happening in the markets every day. I don't have time for that. Right. If you like that type of stuff, fantastic. Me personally, I don't want to do all that. So I don't track my net worth on a daily basis because it would require me uh, doing a little lot more work than I want to do. Um, the reason it hardens your stomach to for the big losses, um, Mark, is because you're watching it every day. Right. So you're going to get all mustered and stressed and don't, you know, you don't do yourself like that. Relax a little bit. Uh, vision. Yes. Uh, CLM. Shout out to you. How much does it cost to take out a, a brokerage account? Doesn't cost anything. You can call up Vanguard. Um, I'm not a sp sponsor for Vanguard, but I like Vanguard. You can call up Vanguard today and or go online or call them up and jump and start a brokerage account. Then connect it to your own checking account and you're good to go. Um, doesn't cost anything. And uh, I suggest you do it. Fidelity, Charles Schwab, whatever it may be. Um, Emar, Google Sheets here too. Right on, Emar. Appreciate you. Um, let's see. Do you personally own any cryptocurrency, says David ASAP. David, I own about three or $400 worth of crypto. I haven't checked my crypto in about six months because I'm not a big crypto guy either, right? Again, I'm old school. You saw my phone I just picked up back here. I'm old school. Crypto is cool. I understand the different, you know, Ethereum and all those different Litecoin, all that stuff. But um, I don't invest a lot of money in that, right? Like I say, three or four hundred bucks, and that's about it. Um, but uh, I'm not mad at you if you have, you know, five percent of your portfolio into it. It's that's totally up to you. Um, CLM says I'm new to this. CLM, if you're new to this. Follow me because I'm going to show you the, the I'm going to show you the tried and true ways to build wealth. OK, it's not going to be fancy. You're not going to see me standing next to a Lamborghini on IG. You just won't do that. This is how I dress every day. OK, I don't you know, I can I can get suited up and tied up and all that stuff right there. But, you know, when you come on, you come on YouTube, you know, you guys are getting the raw me, not uh, uh, me in some business suit. Uh, Miss Journey says, I like Fidelity. Cool. Fidelity is cool, too. Heard a lot of good things about Fidelity. Um, all right. So I was putting money towards student loan balance while interest was paused. Was this good? Trinice, I'm going to tell you, yes, it's OK. I did the same thing. As I mentioned earlier, I paid off my student loan during the pandemic just a few months ago. Just paid them off. Didn't wait on somebody else to do this for me. Somebody that I just said, it's, it's on me. I'm going to do it. So I did it. We didn't wait on anything else. Now, some people don't have that ability. Some do. Um, I'm not mad at you. If you want to get that student loan debt relief or you want to take advantage of that, that's cool. I'm not against that at all. Uh, but in my situation, I was able to do it. Um, so I went ahead and did it. Um, yeah, Mark said he has Fidelity and Vanguard. Fidelity is better. In my opinion, I think here's the, the big difference. Let me just share you this. The big difference between Vanguard and Fidelity is this. In my opinion, fidelity allows fractional uh, fractional investing where you don't have to buy a whole share of something at Vanguard. You got to buy a whole share because Vanguard does not allow fractional, um, you know, fractions to be invested. So that's the big difference between the two. I think fidelity has a huge uh, has more holdings in Vanguard. But Vanguard's only been around since about the 1970s, early 70s. Jack Bogle, um, who's really got going with index funds. He's the person that started index fund. He's the person that started Vanguard. Um, he p recently passed away in his nineties or something, but so, um, Emar says, do you automate or actively buy your investments? I actively purchase a little bit of investment, but I also am fully involved with my jobs for my jobs, three tip safe, uh, thrift savings plan. So I put a lot towards my job and my job really invests sort of like in index funds. I work for the federal government. Um, so, Hey, super, 
I appreciate the the the, the uh, smash the like button live uh, stream. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate that so much. I really do. Um, Steven says, keep up the great work. Thanks, Steven. I appreciate you supporting me, man. I, I always read your comments, so I appreciate your comment and, uh, quite a bit. Uh, been following. Kimmy says, been following since August. Glad to catch your first live. Glad to have you here. Um, I'm a real dude. I'm not just a dude that comes on the Internet and uh, – Tells you, hey, attend my weekend course for $20,000. I, I don't do all that, right? Uh, when F Benjamin says, when figuring net worth, do you include things like equity in your home or value in vehicles? Yes, I do, uh, Benjamin. I include everything, even what's in my bank accounts. You know, maybe savings accounts might have small balances. I include all of it because I want, I want to, I really want to get the full picture. Um, and maybe I'll do another video about that. I don't know about doing another video about that, but I might share that with you guys. If you go in the archives of this channel, you'll see a video about a year and a half ago, maybe almost two years ago, of me breaking down my net worth on camera live with you guys and showing you exactly how I figure my net worth. Um, but I do include equity in the home and things like that, because if all if, if all was said and done, I could sell this home and, 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 and have equity. Right. So I do include those things and vehicles. I include. I, now, listen, full disclosure, listen, full disclosure. All right, Benjamin. I drive old cars, so my cars don't have a whole lot of equity. I drive a, a 2007. I have a 2009. Uh, I'm a Toyota guy, so I drive old cars. They don't have a whole lot of miles on it, but they run really, really, really well. I'm not a brand new type of car type guy. That uh, that's not me necessarily. So, um, um, Yes, Stephen. Old school ways do have their perks for sure. CLM, due to inflation, how much do you think I will need to retire in the future? CLM, that's a personal finance question. It's really personal based on a lot of things, based on your preferences, based on uh, really how old you are, what you currently have, um, where you want to be. That's the first thing I would ask you. Where do you want to be and how many years you want to get there or, or, or at what point? So there's a lot of questions um, that I would say. Inflation is high right now. Inflation has come back down. If you look at the core PCE numbers, guys, inflation is coming down slowly but surely. Um, so we'll see what happens. All right. So let's see here. Any more questions? Man, I wish you guys would put a Q in front of your question. That would help me identify it. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Let me jump back into this, guys. So, um, we talked about the first thing you have to do when you ask, when you're trying to reach financial freedom. And I'm going to get to some more questions, guys. You got to ask yourself, what is financial freedom to you? And then you have to ask yourself, exactly what do you want? Now, that sounds like a really simple question to a lot of people, right? What do you want? But I, I listen, I talk to people, I've talked to hundreds of people about their money, right? And when you ask people, what do you want? A lot of people have a hard time answering that question. They haven't really figured out exactly what it is that they want with their money, what they want in terms of financial freedom. What does it mean to them personally? Where would you see yourself in 10 or 15 years? When you ask that question to people, people have to look inside of themselves and, hmm, I haven't really thought about it. Or people will say what they want, but it'll be very general, right? Oh, I just want to live comfortably. Like living comfortably is cool, but that's not it. You got to get more specific about what you want. If you want financial freedom, you got to define it and then figure out what it takes to get there. You got to know what it is before you can figure out what steps you got to take to get there, right? You have to know what it looks like in order to say, that's what I want. And you got to know what you want exactly, specifically what you want to develop your plan to getting there. Right. Uh, where do you want to be in 10 or 15 years, 20 years? you got to ask yourself that. Um, and then you've got to turn around and ask yourself, what did you do today to get there? What did you do yesterday to get there? What are you planning to do later today and tomorrow to get where you want to be in the future in terms of financial freedom? Right. Um so important to know, guys. Um, so the, the second thing, and let me just kind of run to the second thing, right? Um, and I'll, I'll get to the questions here in just a second. If you want financial freedom, you got to ask yourself those questions first, but then you got to be, be willing to set up a game plan, right? And when I say game plan, you have to, okay, think about what it's going to take to get there and then develop a plan today to get there. Everybody wants financial freedom, right? 
but almost nobody, I mean, literally almost nobody creates a real written plan to get there. Almost nobody. Again, I've talked to hundreds of people one-on-one -on -one about their money. Almost nobody. I think I had two or three people that said, oh, yeah, here's my plan right here. Boom, pull it out. Nobody has a written plan, right? If you want what other people don't have when it comes to money and personal finances, then you have to be willing to do what most people won't do or what most people don't do. Right. So, you know, have a written plan to get there. That's that's and it don't take long. Right. I'm not telling you to you got to have some laid out, you know, big old, you know, six page, 60 page plan. You, you, know, you write your plan on a napkin. It doesn't matter where you write the plan. Right. But studies do show that if you write something down with a pen and a piece of paper, studies do show that you're more apt to follow it and more apt to reach whatever thing you write down on that napkin. It just it it connects different things in your brain. Right. I know it's old school, but it works. So, you know, know what financial freedom looks like to you, know where you want to be in terms of a vision with your money. And then you need to be, be developing a plan on paper now. Um, this plan is a plan. Now, nobody is your plan. Nobody, nobody else has your income. Nobody else has your expenses. Nobody else has your budget. Nobody else has your goals. Nobody else has your vision. That's why it's your vision because you see it, right? Nobody has your problems and issues and family, right? Nobody has all those. So all those things are unique to you. And so therefore you have, a, have to have a unique to you vision or plan, right? A unique to you written plan. That, that's only you, right? Now, I know doing these really basic things with money, uh, in my opinion, guys, I used to be a, a shoe salesman, right? 23 years ago, I, I sold shoes. And doing what I'm telling you, these basic things with money, to me, I kind of look at it sort of like buying cheap shoes, right? I would rather buy the $200 pair of shoe that is going to last me for 10 years than buy the $50 shoe that's going to last me for two years or to last me for a year and a half because I'm wearing it out. It's a cheap shoe, right? Quality, right? In other words, with money, you might as well do things right at the beginning. And it may take you a year or two to do things right at the beginning. But five or 10 years down the road, you won't still be struggling because you 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 did the right things. You built a strong foundation, right? Kind of like somebody talked about credit earlier in the feed, right? Kind of like fixing your credit. A lot of people go out and fix their credit, but they don't address the behavior that led to the bad credit, right? The underlying foundational behavior that led to the bad credit in the first place. So they have bad credit, declare bankruptcy. Some of you know people like this, declare bankruptcy. And guess what? Five years later, their credit is messed up again, right? Because they didn't build a strong foundation in terms of behavior. Right. So when you when I tell you to, when the things I tell you to do to grow money and build wealth and to reach your financial freedom, they're all about building a strong foundation with money. And the things I've mentioned so far, even in this quick video is get a you know, get a written. Think about where you want to go. Right. Think about it. What it, I'm, I'm telling you to think because I want you to start changing this and then I want you to write it down and have a plan, a game plan on what you want to do with your vision, with your goals and with some action steps. That's the foundation. So you don't end up back in the same place 10 years from now where you are today, right? That's the blueprint, right? Your drawing, that's your drawings, your specifications. Kind of like, okay, I managed construction contracts for a lot of years. Whenever something is built, and when I say built, I mean a building. Whenever a building is built, they build the building on paper first, right? They build it on paper. That means they have drawings. They have specifications. They got blueprints. They come in and they review. They review the blueprints. They pull them all out, put them on a big, or they look at them on the screen right nowadays, monitor screens, and they build it on paper first. Your financial life is the same way, right? Build it on paper first. It seeps into here. It changes the way you think. It helps you make decisions. It helps guide you. It helps tell you whether or not you need to go and spend $500 on that concert, right? Or spend $6,000 on that vacation, and you know you only got $1,000 in the bank to cover it. When you have a written game plan, it guides your decision making. Can you imagine, like, football season starting, right? Can you imagine a football team, a coach, going into a game without a game plan, right? No game plan. 
Just going to wing it. Let's see what happens. That don't happen. That doesn't, that doesn't work. That doesn't lead to success. Same thing with your money. you got to have a game plan. And people just gloss over when I say game plan or write it on paper. Don't gloss over that. You can't build anything unless you build it first, in my opinion, on paper. Have a written game plan. So that's an important piece to reach in your financial freedom sooner rather than later. Let me jump into the questions, guys. I'm, I'm sorry. I kind of got on a tangent there, but um, just want to drop that, that that little nugget to you. All right. So let me go back up here. Retired last year. Haven't done anything with my TSP yet, but can't wait to contribute and still earning gains. Kimmy said, thinking of rolling over. Nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, check out your you know taxes and all that. Get a good you know CPA or get good advice on that. Um what do I think about XRP, says D? Uh, XRP, is the, I think that's one of the uh, the uh, coins, right? Uh, again, not a big fan of Bitcoin. I wrote my Freedom Financial Plan on Wednesday. I'm working on it now, says Stephen. Congratulations, Stephen. Excellent. Stephen said he wrote his Freedom Financial Plan on Wednesday. Right on. That's what you got to do. Now it's in the front of your mind. And it feels, it almost feels liberating when you begin to take charge of your money like that, right? Um so mommy said getting therapy helped me overcome money trauma. Good, good point, uh, mommy trader. I appreciate that comment because uh, a lot of times what we think about money, what we do with money, how we behave with money is based on how we were taught with money. And sometimes we got to relearn our mind. We got to relearn what we were taught about money. And I had to do that myself, uh, guys, to be honest with you. Great, great comment. Question. Thanks for putting that cue, Matsy. Uh, can I start investing with unit trust as per the plan? What goes in the plan? I'm not sure what unit trust is. Um, I don't know what that is, Matsy. I apologize. Uh, Jesse, for me, financial freedom is being able to keep 90% of my paychecks. Hello, live below your means and drive older vehicles. I love my 20 year old Honda's CRV right now. Been loyal to me. Fantastic. Congratulations to you. Uh, Adam says, crazy seeing how much people pay on their monthly car note. Woo, you're right, Adam. I think the average new car payment in America is what? 700 over 700 bucks average used car right around 500 bucks i think i read that um you're you're right and cars go down in value typically they go down in value right um mark says savings rate is your cheat code absolutely the more you put back the more you'll have um let's see here if you want to learn to fix your own vehicles to save thousand dollars jesse if you want jesse said if you learn to fix your own vehicles it saves thousands of dollars jesse you are 100 percent right or Jesse, get you a get you a good small time mechanic who is very very fair about how to how to uh, fix cars. And they, you know, you take it to the big shop. The big shop's going to charge you. Call, go, the big shop is going to charge you a thousand bucks. You know, John around the corner, who always is greasy, always under a car, he might charge you three hundred, four hundred for the same exact thing. Get you a good mechanic uh, if you don't want to do it yourself. But good good comment, Jesse. Uh, let's see here. Um, Miss Journey, love these conversations. I do too. I really do. I think we need more real, basic, common sense uh, money conversations on the internet. Um, let's see here. Steven said, I'm watching and working with intentions to see the manifestation. Fantastic. Plus Ultra says, I love dividends. Listen, I like dividends too, but I always say reinvest the dividends if you can, uh, because dividends compounded over a long period of time. They really, really help your money. Now, if you feel like, you know, I want to collect my three or four hundred dollars in dividends or my 30, 40, 50 dollars in dividends every month to help me live on. That's cool, too. But to be honest with you, I like reinvesting dividends because I like the compound interest growth of my money plus my dividends. It, it really boosts things up quite a bit. All right. Uh, Kimmy said, love Toyota so much. Great question. Thoughts on savings investing for kids? Um, I love it. But here's the deal invest for you. Make sure you're investing for you. Because again, when you get to be 60 years old, you don't want to be relying on your kids to pay to pay for you. You don't want to be relying on your kids to eat. You don't want to be relying on your kids to put a pair of jeans on, right? Don't invest in your children if you have not invested in you. That's my advice, my opinion. Okay. I don't, you don't have to have a five, two, nine plan with a hundred thousand dollars. If you have no emergency fund for yourself, if you have nothing put aside. So you first. I say you first, not to be stingy, not to be selfish, but to be realistic, right? Me personally, I don't want my kids to have to pay for me when I get older. I want to pay for me. And guess what? I want to be helping them if they need some help or my grandchildren. So I want to put myself in the position. So um, invest for your kids. Great. Yes, I invest for my grandkids. But also at the same time, 
make sure first you're taking care of yourself. Savings rate, rate, me mega door, back door, in good. Okay, wait, that question went away. What happened? The question. Uh, do you? Okay, I can't. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, I'm skipping a couple of them, guys. Can't get to all. quite a few here. Do you think getting into real estate now in 2023? is a good idea is everything too volatile it's never a bad time to invest in real estate if you plan to hold the real estate did you get the second part you got it's nothing wrong with investing in real estate if you plan to hold it because we know 99 percent of the time long term real estate is going to increase in value it's going it's, it's going to increase in value if you if you were the person that said you know i don't think i'm gonna invest in real estate right now with this pandemic thing going on in 2020 you know i don't i'm a little 2021 whatever I'm, I'm gonna wait a little bit well if you waited a little bit you missed out on a whole bunch of gains don't wait invest in real estate right if the rates go back down you can always refi but oh if you plan to hold real estate it's okay to invest in it right now. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, MR said, can I add to my 401k to catch up for missing over a decade and a half of not investing? Maybe. How old are you? How much do you plan? What, you know, are you putting, are you going to put in the max? What is the max? Um, you know, all these type of things are the questions that uh, I would say that you're never, it's never too late to catch up. When you, if you're over 50, there's catch up that you can pay extra into as well for your 401k. Um uh let's see lauren says should you leave money to your church in a trust if you feel like you want to give money to the church there's nothing wrong with that i would say yes in a trust is okay um you can have specific um direction in terms of what you want to do with that money at the church or what at the church you want it to go to i don't see a problem with it um Let's see here. My first step of helping people with generational wealth is to pay for their college. No student loans. Yes, I paid for my students, my, my kids' college. Um, my one daughter went to college. But let me give you a little, if you got a kid going to college, let me give you a little tip here, okay? If you got a kid that's living on campus and you want them to go to college, please, please read my lips on this one. I can't tell you this is so important. Please tell that kid to apply to be a resident assistant to apply to take on a leadership role in their dormitory that that paid for my daughter's um i think meal uh, her living and meals for like two or three years right so please there's ways to get around I, I need to do a whole video on how ways to go to college debt free i'm gonna do a video on that guys remind me of that because that's really important there's a lot of ways to go to college debt free um even though colleges are way too expensive in my opinion and they sh they're they're i won't say they're, they're they're fleecing people for money almost but um okay so another person said i'm just reading questions because this is a q a guys love your content can you become can you be comfortable with five hundred thousand dollars retirement um yes um did, were you looking at my notes? I'm going to do a video on that, by the way, how to retire on $500,000, because I think it's very, very possible. Of course, the biggest piece of that is you have to be frugal, right? You may not be able to do some of the things you're doing right now. You have to uh, downsize your living, right? And you may have to downsize your living accommodations where you live, because that's the largest part of what people pay is paying for a roof over their head. So if you if there's a way you can get around that, um, then yes, $500,000 is very possible. Um, people retire on much less than $500,000 every single day, right? The amount of people that have $500,000 to retire on is very little, but a lot of people make it work with much less money. So absolutely you can do that. Um, um, Marcus asked that question and some people are answering them. That's good. I appreciate you guys doing that. Um, uh, out of South Africa, Matsy, and uh, I see the most investment options don't apply. You just got to keep seeing which brokerage account you can get into. Uh, let's see here. Truth or in, on investing in yourself first? Absolutely. Um, thoughts on a sales job? Love sales jobs. Okay. I love sales jobs because I cut my teeth as a waiter years ago when I was in my late teens. And I was also a salesperson at Circuit City, if some of you remember Circuit City back in the late 90s. So I like sales jobs because sales jobs help you learn how to talk to people. Sales jobs help you learn how to communicate. It helps you to be, understand how to listen to people and, uh, uh, and approach people's needs and uh, address their needs. And um, I love sales jobs. All right. So sales jobs can really teach you a lot. Um, Let's see. Please, much more can go to college next fall. Yes, Ms. Ms. Riz, stay tuned to that video because when you're, you know, 
I help a lot of people out with that because I was able to send my two kids to college. Now, one of my daughters got a volleyball scholarship. She was a volleyball player. She she got a partial scholarship, right? She got some money, but uh, then she took advantage of a few other things and we helped her through. So um, how do I feel about REITs? REITs are cool if you want to get into real estate and not have to uh, uh, turn a wrench or to call your property management company or to get a phone call at, at two in the morning. REITs are okay. No problem with REITs. Do your research on REITs though. Uh, some All REITs aren't the same. Um, REITs is real estate investment trust, right? Um, it's a way to invest in real estate by, it's sort of like stocks and things like that. A little bit like stocks. I don't want to go too deep into it because I don't know how much everybody would be interested in REITs. Uh, real estate syndicates are cool, but you got to be careful with who you're involved with. Read, read the fine print, right? With the, with real estate syndicates, know who you're getting into partnership with and read the fine print. Um, Kat said, I was an RA, I, I was an RA and it was a blessing. I was much, I was more financially literate in that time. So could have taken a full advantage. So yeah, you're right. Being a resident assistant in a dorm is excellent and an excellent way to help you pay for uh, college. Um, thanks for showing support, Brandy. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for showing up. Uh, Eric Guzman, I appreciate you being here. Um, and thank you for being on this channel and showing up the channel. Feel free to smash the like button for me, guys. Share the video, and and uh, I appreciate you uh, subscribing as well. Military background. Um, I'm a government guy, so I run into a lot of military folks. Question, Robert said, how much cash should we have in a safe these days? All things considered. I don't I'm not a big cash in the safe person, right? I'm okay with putting money in the bank. I don't want I don't want you to keep too much money under under your mattress, right? I want you to go ahead and have some money in a bank. Um I think your money is safe in a bank. Um I want you to have em an enough emergency money in a bank or somewhere where you can get to it quickly that can cover 3 to 6 months of your monthly expenses or more. Right. If you're a person in a sales job where your money goes up, goes down every single month or you're not quite sure about your job, you need to have a little more money saved up in your emergency fund. OK, but if you have a real steady job, right, you're a teacher or, you know, you work for a government agency and your job is pretty solid and you've got some money saved up in other areas and all this good stuff. And maybe you can have an emergency fund, maybe three or four months of your salary. Right. But I, I do suggest you have emergency money that you get to. And I don't need your emergency money to grow. Your emergency money doesn't have to make a whole bunch of money. It's just there so you can get to it quickly. You got other investments that's there to make a lot of money for you. So don't don't think of your emergency money as actually trying to make a whole bunch of money for you. It's not what it's there for. Um, Damon said, I need the college video. I got you. Um, question, thoughts on an H HSA? HSA? HSAs are cool, all right? I uh, have no problem with those. Those are good, good, uh, great information. Thank you. You're welcome. Geekdom 101. Great name. All right. How can I find question? Kat said, how can I find a financial advisor that provides free services? Watch, watch my videos. Watch my videos. Um, watch YouTube. Right. Uh, but I'm going to give you advice. Um, and you can call me up for a 15 minute free conversation. Right. So I don't charge anything for that. Right. But that's how you can get you. The, the way you get free information, free and free financial advisor information is you begin to you take it upon yourself to learn. You take it upon yourself. And I'm not against financial advisors. If you have to get one and pay for one, that's cool. Nothing wrong with that at all. But if you don't have money to pay for one, then you got to learn how to do a lot of self-education, a lot of self-learning. Take it upon yourself to do what you're doing right now. Come into the live streams, you know, ask the questions here and there. Right. Join a few Facebook groups, uh, go on IG and start making sure things that are dealing with finances are coming through your feed. Right. That's the type of things you got to do if you want to do that and you don't have the money to pay an, an advisor. Right. If you do, if you do want to pay an advisor, cool. Nothing wrong with that at all. But you ultimately you have to figure out your own financial, um, your own financial mindset, your own financial philosophy. Right. And the way you do that, in my opinion, is you read, 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 listen, 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 take in information. What makes sense to you, right? What sounds too good to be true? Toss that to the side because it is too good to be true, right? So you got to use your own discernment and start doing some, some personal self-learning. One thing that separates people that tend to be very successful and not very successful are successful people deeply involve themselves in self-learning, Okay. And people that tend not to be successful, they tend to wait on other people to teach them. They tend to wait on other people to tell them or, or show them or give me. 
You don't always have to do that, right? Take it upon yourself, right? Take that ambition and go get it. Uh, CLM says, who are my mentors and influences? Um, over the years, guys, I read a lot. So I've read through, you know, Thomas J. Stanley, um, even some Dave Ramsey, even some, um, I listen to a lot of different people, Miles Monroe, you name it. I listen to a lot of people um, and I'm able to discern whether or not those people are for me. I listen to a lot of people, read a lot of people, and I take what fits me and my philosophy and, and what I've learned over the years. And uh, I kind of chew the, the meat and spit out the fat. Is that how you say that, that, that terminology? But just some of the mentors, and I have a few people that I talk to about my money situations who I won't mention their names, but so it's important to have somebody you can go to and have those conversations about money, right? Uh, let's see, REITs video, Brett's video, please. I think it means, Marcus means REITs. Uh, okay, find a fee-only financial advisor, not taking a percentage. That, those work as well, right? Where you can pay a flat 200 bucks and have a conversation and they're not trying, they're not taking money from your percentage of what you earn and, and, and every single year in terms of your money and investments. Um, let's see, cash and save. I'm looking at questions. Put a cue in, in the front if you can, guys. Um, so Roth TSP versus a Roth IRA. I have a I have a video on here. TSP versus um not TSP Roth versus Roth IRA. I did a whole video about that. Um, that's on my channel. So feel free to check that out for free, guys. It really go. It really you know takes its time to go through it. Um, have I discussed the whole BRICS, Brazil, and all these Russia and all these? Is the is a real is this a real concern? The BRICS nations are a group of nations that are coming together, perhaps maybe to build some strength and solidarity. And it may be ultimately in terms of uh, uh, I haven't really did a video on that yet. I might do a video on that coming up in terms of what that means for the U.S.'s currency. I think it it does it does warrant somebody taking a look, us taking a look at it and figuring out and knowing what's going on with the BRICS nation. So I appreciate that question. So, yeah, if you get some time today, B-R-I-C-S, check it out. I'm going to do a video on, on that shortly. I was going to do a video on that months ago, but I never got, got to it. So thanks for bringing that up, Kimmy. Um, let's see here. Financial advisors are overrated, said Mark. Could be. Um, could be. Um, sometimes, right? If you have enough money to pay them, I don't I don't have a, a problem with that. that. Uh, Miss Journey says, self-education all day. Dave Ramsey was my gateway drug. It's great for beginners. Geeked him. Dave Ramsey is cool. I like now. I disagree with some of the things Dave says, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. Just because I disagree with some things somebody says, it doesn't mean I can't still respect them and listen to them and, uh, you know, I'm not one of those guys. Everybody has their own take on it, and that's okay. So let's talk. Let's continue to talk about, and I'll look at the questions again in a bit, guys. What happens uh, with people and money and getting to financial freedom sooner than later, right? I talked about, left off talking about a foundation, right? Like building a building, right? You have to build a foundation. That's what I talk about a lot on this channel. Um, first, figuring out what you want. Second, developing a written plan to get what you want. And to be disciplined with the plan, don't just write the plan, but stick with the plan and be consistent with the plan, right? Stay on your plan when you have this written plan I mentioned. Um, now, if you follow what I'm telling you guys or what I talk about a lot on this channel, it doesn't have to take you forever to reach financial freedom. It doesn't have to take you 25, 30 years. It only have to take you 20 years, right? It depends on how focused you are, how intense you are, how determined you are, and really, how disciplined you are, right? Um, so another thing I want to talk about in terms of reaching your financial freedom sooner rather than later, and I'll, I'll hit a couple of questions here in a second, but you got to be in the habit. This is one of the habits you have to be in is managing and controlling your spending, right? It's huge. And I know I might be preaching to the choir because all of you on this channel, you don't have a problem with right controlling your spending, right? But you got to live below your means and you got to do things like budget on a on a on a regular monthly basis and go revisit that budget right the budget is your measure of performance with your money that previous month right you create the budget but then you go back and check the budget right who else goes back and checks their budget you have to go back and check your budget to see if you actually did what you said you were going to do and it you, the budget is your performance measure right um so think about a budget like that, not just, oh, I'm going to write down what I'm going to do every single month. Boom, 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 boom. No, go back and look at it. See if you did it. And then make your next budget and hold yourself accountable the next month, 
right? So again, you got to do the things that most people won't do, right? So, um, but you have to manage also your wants, your, your the things that you feel like you need. All of this has to, all of this to the extent that you have some type of extra cushion every single month, right? Spending below your means is your income, right? So living below your means basically just means spending money below your means. Your expenses are less than your means. And the, the, the more you can do that, the more you can have your expenses lower than your income, the better. And let me just give you this tip. One of the things that I did over the years that helped me is that as I begin to grow in income, I kept my expenses almost the same. Okay. So when I was you know, making twenty thirty thousand dollars a year at uh, in 2001 or something, 2002, um, I had my expenses and I can go back because I've done a budget so long. I go back and look at the books, but my budget today, other than inflation, right? Because we know inflation is an issue other than inflation. My budget today, it ain't a whole lot more in my budget today than it was 20, 15, 20 years ago, because I've been able to keep my expenses, not the amount of the expenses necessarily because of inflation, but what the expenses were, I've been able to keep them almost the same. When my income went up, my expenses didn't necessarily go up. This is the trap that a lot of people go into. In in one, you know, in 2018, they're making $50,000 a year, so they got $45,000 expenses. But in 2024, they're making $90,000 a year, and now they added on a bunch of stuff. And now their expenses are $85,000 a year. So it really doesn't feel like you made any progress. Now, you can blame inflation for some of that. We know that. But not all of it, right? So, there's, a, there's a natural habit for people, to natural inclination for people to spend more money when they make more money. Your job to control your spending on your way to financial freedom is every time you make more, you don't have to spend more. You maybe can do it the opposite way. You make more money and you invest more money. That's not opposite, but it's a different way. You make more money and you invest more money. Every time you get a raise, every time you get a bonus, every time you get a promotion, you make more money, you invest more money, right? Try that instead of making more money and spending more money, right? It's all about managing your money on the way to financial freedom. Nothing matters if you don't manage what you already have. Everything we're talking about, you can put it in a box and throw it out the window and go burn it. If you don't manage your money, all of this is a moot point. You've got to be a manager. You've got to take inventory of what you bring in and inventory of what you send out. Income and expenses on a monthly basis, right? That's managing your money, being a good steward over your finances. You, you want to become almost hyper-focused on your money, Right. Uh, again, we're not pet we're not putting money on a pedestal, but we're focused on being very intentional with money, tracking spending and things like that, right? Frankly, guys, this is where most people miss the boat is the whole management piece. People, a lot of people just a lot of people make enough money, they just don't manage the money right. Not everybody makes enough money, but a lot of people do. And management is the one place where people get caught up and hung up because managing money is a lot like managing yourself, right? Managing your money is a lot like discipline. And a lot of people, our spending habits are sometimes out of control. Let me see if you guys got any more comments here Let me or questions. Um, feel free to put a Q in front of your question. Also, don't forget to smash the like button, guys, because we want this video to get out to more and more people. Common sense talk about money common sense talk about money not some flashy not flat not not how do you get ten thousand dollars tomorrow how to make you know hey give me twenty thousand dollars and we i can come and give you a master class right not at all we don't we don't want to do that right uh mommy trader said lots of free audio books on youtube listen while you drive work and cook great advice mommy trader excellent advice uh have you made a video about what the a tsp account is and how it works um, TSP is Thrift Savings Plan, and if you're in America, uh, uh, Dope Law, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about the, the one that it's for federal government workers, right? Um, the TSP, so you got 401k for for-profit businesses, you got 403bs for nonprofit businesses, and you have 
TSP, Thrift Saving Plan for people that work in federal government space here in America. Um, I think TSP can be for other play, but it's just a thrift savings plan, and it's similar to a 401k, 403b. They have similar rules, right? Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad was a game changer. Yeah, I read that book a long time ago. Yep. Um, Geekdom says, I'm not as safe as Dave. Yeah, I'm a little bit different than Dave in some ways. Um, let's see here. Smart Ray. If you hit the soon. Okay, I'm just reading through them. Okay, Richest Man in Babylon. Uh, I heard that was a good book. I've never read that book, but I maybe to put it on my read, reading list, of course. Uh, I haven't read Rich and Righteous just yet. I don't think. Um, great suggestion, though. I'm gonna. I might look a couple of those books up and actually put them on my list because I love to read. Um, Twyla said, "Let your budget modify your behavior. You ain't lying. Assets over liabilities. Yes, pay yourself first. At least ten percent. Vacation time said. Absolutely." Um, question, if I get a raise, Mark said, if I get a raise or cut an expense, I increase auto contra automatic contributions to investments. Excellent. Um, yes, if you get a raise or you cut expenses, yes, you probably, uh, I, sh I would increase my automatic tr uh, contributions to my investments. Uh, absolutely. Um, dope losses, how many years did it take for you to be financially free? Um, it took it took it took it took a few years because I had a lot of things going on. I, I had colleges going on, trying to pay for the kids. Um, I had to do a lot of learning and make some mistakes. I made mistakes with money. I don't stand before you as a perfect person with money. I've made mistakes with money. Um, so I had to get over my mistakes with money um, because I didn't have somebody on YouTube telling me what to do. You know, hey, do this, do that. Don't do that. Don't do, do that. Maybe you should think about this. I kind of had to learn a lot of this on my own. I was poor up until I was 30 years old, guys. When I say poor, I mean, I had a negative net worth, negative $30,000 at the age of 30. I had an old 96 Honda Civic. Um, I owed student loans. Um, and I had a bit of money from my uh, teaching position that I rolled over to the federal government, transferred over. But I was I, I was broke. I, I came from a very poor background, just so you guys know. Most of you don't know my story in here. Maybe you do or don't. But I came from a very, very poor background. Um, I didn't come from money. I didn't have a lot of money. And that's probably led to a lot of my uh, keeping an old phone, right, <laughs> and a lot of my old school ways. Um so it took a while. It took a while for me because I made a lot of mistakes. When I say a while, I'm saying, you know, 15 years, you know, 20 years. Right. Um, for me, it took five years. OK, good. OK, she's OK. Boom. Let's see. Question. I keep losing money in the stock market. You will. The market is like this right now. Boop, boop, boop. It's kind of up this year. Market is up uh, overall. S&P is up like, I think, 17, 18 percent so far this year. So uh, maybe a little less than that, maybe a little more. But um, don't worry about it. Don't, don't watch the market on a regular basis. You know, I, am, listen, good, solid blue chip companies, right? Good, solid blue chip companies or index funds. I'm a big index fund investor. As I talked about Vanguard earlier, index funds are nice because it's a basket of funds, but it's a hundred different funds, 200 different funds. And it's not managed index funds are typically not managed by a, a broker. So you, you don't pay a lot of fees like you would say with a, a mutual fund, right? Um, Let's see here. I'm broke. How do I start investing? Watch this channel. I give you a lot of tips on it, right? S start. Here's what you do, Dave. Start with the things I'm talking about on this video as far as reaching your financial freedom. The basics. You're, if you're broke, start with here first. Your mind, how you think about money. Start how you start reading about money. Start watching the video. Start learning. Start taking notes. Start changing how you think about money because you're broke right now because of how you thought about money up to right now. That's why you're broke, because of the way you handled money and thought about money up to today. Now, if you want to not be broke, you got to do something different. You got to think something different. It all starts in your head first. When you start thinking different, you start behaving different. When you start behaving different with money, you have different outcomes with money. So start here, start reading, start with the basics, Make sure you have uh, 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 what you want. You know what you want. Make sure you have a game plan. Make sure you, uh, you know, manage your money properly. What you do have. Right. That may take you a month or two or three months to get it ready, to get yourself ready to start. Maybe see about investing. But that's what you got to do first. So you're building a foundation and not just throwing money into investing. Right. You're building a foundation with money. And that's the big thing we want to talk about. Um, Q. 
question. Dave Ramsey says the whole life insurance is a ripoff and infinite banking is a scam. What do I say? I'm not a big fan of infinite banking. I'm not a big fan of whole life insurance. No, I'm not. In that point, I sort of agree with Dave. But I think that at some point for some people who have a level of wealth, whole life insurance does play a part. It can help them. But if you're broke or if you don't have a lot of money or if you have a $60,000 net worth, whole life insurance ain't going to help you a whole lot, right? It has its place. Whole life insurance has its place for people that have the money and make a lot of money or people that have a larger net worth. Those people, but unfortunately, whole life insurance is marketed to people that don't, that don't have no money. Right. That's the wrong. That, that Those are the people that don't need whole life insurance. They need a term policy. Whole life is for people that have some semblance of wealth. When you get over a million, two million, three million dollars of net worth, you can have a whole life, have a whole life policy and you can play some of those games. But you can't play those games if you want a, a five hundred thousand dollar whole, whole life policy and it costs you four four hundred dollars a month. And it's going to take you 10, 15 years to build up some cash in there to get cash value so you can go borrow money. I don't believe in all that. It's not necessary for most people. Most people are just fine with a term policy. Just my thought on that. Hope I answered that right. Um, okay. Stock market is a gamble. I don't agree. Stock market is not a gamble. Stock market is businesses that you are investing in. And if you do stock market investing properly, you do your research, not just you see a ticker symbol and you throw money at it. No, yeah, that's kind of like gambling. But if you do your research, I don't think it's gambling. I think I think some people do it and they do it in a, in a good way and they make money off of it. I don't see it as gambling, though. Um, index funds for the win. Yep. You live and learn. Good perspective. Good. Um, my brown skin Barbie says I invest in mutual funds. Nothing wrong with that. Um, remember, though, you're paying a fee for a fund manager, typically at a mutual fund. Most mutual funds, you're paying higher fees than with index funds. Um Real estate is a safe journey. I mean, safe, uh, safe investment from a uh, late lacious or lashes journey. Good point. I agree. I like real estate a lot. Um, I don't listen to mommy trader, but maybe I should wall street trapper. I've heard of him. He's the guy from Louisiana. I think Richard Fain. Listen to, I've been listening to Richard Fain for a while. Yeah. I like that guy. Uh, Larry Jones. I think I listen to him. Yes. Um, good, good, good. I listen to people right on the internet because I'm, I'm learning as well. Right. I always think in terms of assets or liabilities says Trish M. Absolutely. And I appreciate you guys. Put a Q if you got a question. Good afternoon. Smitty the Queen says, "All I'm a financial coach and smart money, bro. I wanted to get your permission to leave my info on your platform. Smitty the Queen, you can leave whatever you want to leave. It's up to you. I don't care. Uh, no spam. No, no spam. Guys, watch out for the spam in the comments because there's a lot of a lot of scammers out there. Smitty the Queen, um, you know, you know, start a YouTube channel, Smitty the Queen. I want, I want you to get on YouTube, right? Really start a community of people that uh, listen to you and believe in what you're saying, and, and you can help that way as well. So um, Church Boy says, is it best to invest with your bank or on your own? We got to talk about that one um, when you're a beginner. Is it best to invest? What is your definition of beginner, right? If you know nothing, um, I don't mind you doing some research before you invest. There, listen, it's very, very simple for you to open up a brokerage account at Vanguard or Fidelity or Merrill Lynch, whatever you want to open. It's very, very simple. The way that you've tuned in and paid attention to this video right here, you can go to Vanguard's website and you can read for about the next two days all their information and you can get a lot of information that way. I don't mind you using other people, though, to help you. Not at all. But at the same time, I want you to understand that self-learning is really, really important. And I don't want you to pass up the opportunity to learn something on your own. Right. So think about that. Um, OK, I'm just there's a, several of them coming in now, guys. Barry, if I don't answer, you might want to re put it back in the chat. I think I skipped down accidentally. Um, OK, so the next thing I want you to do in terms of reaching your financial freedom, we talked about the basics. Right. And I'll jump into some more questions here in just a moment. I promise you guys, because this is a Q&A. But the next thing to think about in terms of building your financial foundation and looking towards financial freedom on your financial journey and trying to get there sooner rather than later is the big three. And some people in the chat have already mentioned the big three. The big three is the stock market, real estate. And number three is business building. Okay. All you need to be doing, if you want to kind of begin to think about how you can fast track, because again, we're talking about 
reaching financial freedom sooner rather than later. Think about the big three when you want to grow your money, right? You, you've done some of the basic stuff, managing your money, doing a budget, making checking your net worth regularly, um, making sure you have a vision, making sure it's written out, right? You've done all that. Now, once you do all of that, you want to be looking at investing your money to make your money grow so you can kind of jump on the fast track in, in terms of trying to reach financial freedom. All you need to do, really, guys, it, is, it doesn't have to be very, very complicated. All you have to do is do two of the big three. The big three, again, stock market investing, real estate, and building a business. That's all you got to do, right? You ain't got to do all three. You could do all three. But and it serves yourself well to diversify, right, by dabbling in two of them or three of them, or three of them. But don't make money so complicated. It's not fancy. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have to you don't have to do Forex trading. You don't have to do day trading. You don't have to do, um, you know, you don't have to dabble in, in crypto. You don't have to do gold and silver. You don't have to do all those things. I'm not saying if you do some of those things and you like those things. Cool. Cool. But building wealth and reaching financial freedom does not have to be complicated and it doesn't have to be fancy. Now, it's not glamorous. It's not overly sexy, right? It's not um, worthy of IG. It's not necessarily worthy of, of uh, you know, the, the flash, right? It's simple. It's basic. But you got to immerse yourself in a couple, two of the, of the big three, right? It helps. Right. That's how you fast track yourself to financial freedom. Um, you know, my portfolio basically consists of two things. Right. Real estate. And I'm in the stock market. Right. Now, I've been fortunate to add some extra businesses on the side. So I, I dabble in the, the business building. Right. Because I treat my real estate like a business. But also I do voiceovers. Right. Uh, I don't get a paid a whole lot for voiceovers, but it helps. Right. Uh, I have a business here on YouTube, right, with, with my YouTube, and that helps, right? YouTube is fast becoming a great side hustle, right? I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentoring people, as I mentioned earlier, right? But those are the things that, you know, you, you don't have to get fancy with this thing. Too many people think that there's some tricks to wealth. They think there's some type of secret trick. If I just do that, I can make a lot of money fast. Look, this YouTube channel, it's not about fast money. It's not about trying to get there super duper quick, right? It's about doing all of the right things, taking your time to get to where you want to go with money and being steady, being consistent, being disciplined over a stretch of time and not touching your 401k, resisting the urge to dip into and get a loan from uh, your, 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 uh, your, retirement money, whatever you have at your job, right? It's about being consistent and disciplined over time. And the more you build that foundation and you be consistent and disciplined over time and you look at the big three as ways to make money, proven ways to make money. Business building is a proven way to make money. Investing in other businesses through the stock market is a proven way to make money over time. Lots of money. Real estate is a proven way to make really, really good money over oh, uh, in real estate over time, right? To build to build wealth, to reach financial freedom to on your financial journey, right? So think about keeping it simple without complicating everything, right? Let me just jump in back into the Q and A, guys, because this was a Q and A. Put a Q next to your next to your question. I appreciate you guys being here on this Saturday. Uh, don't forget to smash the like button below, guys. And also, don't forget to share this video, this common sense talk about money, um, which people are, are because there's so many scammers out there, people are hurting for just a regular person to talk about money in a regular fashion, right? Um, who does it? Who's not Dave Ramsey? Or who's not um, name your guru, right? Um, who's somebody that is relatable, right? So I appreciate you guys tuning in and doing that for me. Um, Blackview says, I won't. I want to start a YouTube channel in trading. How many times? How many time you think I need for making four thousand hours? Well, you only got to make three thousand hours now. I think uh, the parameters for getting monetized on YouTube have dropped down to five hundred subscribers or and three thousand watch hours. So you only got to get three thousand watch hours. Let me just tell you this, Blackview. It took me about a year and a half. 
to get 4,000 watch hours on YouTube. A year and a half. Took me a long time. Um, Smitty says, good afternoon, all. I'm a, Okay, he said that already. I think I read that. Uh, Kimmy said, felt like I was bleeding money for the last five months or so. Uh, so now I'm in no spending challenge. Good for you, Kimmy. It's helping me to see where my money was going. Right, right. Good job. You're taking, you're starting to take inventory and be intentional with your money and track your money. Congratulations to you on that. Fantastic. Um, Church Boy says, is it best to invest with your bank or on your own? I think I read that already. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, uh, mommy says favorite places to do research websites you like to use. I look at, I, in terms of, um, uh, regular information, I look at the regular news online and things like that in terms of the big news places, right? All of them, you know, um, business journals and things like that is where I like to do a lot of reading and websites. Um, I watch a lot of folks on YouTube, um, Barnes and Noble is my favorite place to go, by the way, that's my favorite store in the world. So I, you know, I like to read and buy books and so forth. Um, I'm reading a history book right now, actually. I like history, right? So I'm reading a history book that's not a money book, but I'll jump into my next book in the next few weeks will be a money book as well. Um, Warren Buffett says cryptocurrency is a bigger fool scam. What do you say? I'm not a crypto guy. I'm not a big crypto guy, Zach. Uh, I don't invest in a lot of crypto. I like proven ways. I think that crypto is very unregulated. And it's it, to me, it's a little dangerous when it's not regulated like that. So I'm not a big crypto guy. Uh, mommy Trader, thank you, uh, Mommy Trader. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being here. Uh, doesn't real estate come with risk like emergency? Absolutely. Everything you put your money to comes with risk. There's definite risk in real estate and real estate is not passive. OK, let's get I don't believe that real estate is very passive. It can be sort of hands off for a minute. Um, once you get a good tenant, let's say you, you buy a, a residential property, you get a good tenant. I got some good tenants now, but guess what? I got to get in there and do some things. I got to talk to my tenants. I manage my own property. So I got to, I got to, Hey, you're late with the rent. Let's have a conversation. What can we do? Here's the lease. Here's what it says. There's a lot of things you got to do with real estate. It's not necessarily hands off and real estate investing is not for everybody. Or I should say being a landlord is not for everybody. Right. Owning property can be for anybody, commercial, warehouses, whatever you own, land, et cetera. But actually dealing with tenants on a regular basis, and that ain't for everybody. Trust me. Um, there's certain there's certain there's a certain temperament you need to have to be a real estate. Uh, you have to be a landlord. And if anybody in the chat is a landlord, you know, let me know. Say right on or something, because you'll know what I'm talking about if you've been a landlord for any amount of time. Um, let's see here. Any more questions? Yes, sir. And it works. Good. Uh, do you think YouTube is a good business? YouTube is incredible. Uh, I'm just going to be flat out honest with you guys. All right. YouTube. If you really get a YouTube channel rolling, when you see people talk about the money they make on YouTube, that money is 1000% real. Okay. As I did on my, one of my last videos, actually the last video I did, you might go back and check it out. I just released it yesterday. Um, I went behind the scenes and I showed you the numbers and I, I, this channel has blown up recently and I showed you the numbers. I didn't get into what I made on YouTube, but I showed you the amount of subscribers that I picked up in the last couple months and YouTube is real. Let me just tell you guys that. Okay. Flat out. Um, double a vibes. I can invest in re in real estate without owning real estate from the UK. Fantastic. Yeah. There's REITs and all types of ways you can be a, a an angel investor, or you could be a silent partner. There's lots, lots of ways you can invest in real estate without actually, uh, turning, turning a wrench, right? Victor, love what you're doing. Thanks, Victor. Appreciate you, man. Uh, I have, appreciate you, Victor. I have, uh, relatives making good money, 10,000 per month, but doesn't have a business. He just works in a company. Love it. Nothing wrong. Listen, there's nothing wrong with working a job. I have no problem with a job. But listen, use your job. Don't let the job just use you. And when I say use your job, I'm saying make sure that you use the all the things that you can do and get out of your job to make your life better. Right. In terms of financially. Right. Go to HR, pull up HR on the Internet. Don't be don't be like a lot of people flat out. I'm going to tell you this. A lot of people, they just they don't pay attention to what their job offers. They don't pay attention to where their job invests the 401, the money into the 401k. They don't pay attention to a lot of perks at a job. Focus, pay attention, take advantage of the low hanging fruit. Your job is the low hanging fruit because your job is there. You go there every day. You might as well be getting all you can out of your job, especially the match, right? If your job matches a certain amount of uh, money that you put in, get, get as much as you can out of your job. Stop being used by your job and not getting anything out of it, right? Um, 
Plus, Ultra says slow money is the best money. Slow money does last, right? Uh, but in terms of reaching your financial freedom sooner rather than later, you it doesn't have to be that slow if you take care of the foundation first. The problem is people don't want to take the time and don't have the patience to get their financial house in order first before they really look into the big three, before they jump into real estate investing, before they look into starting a business. I talk to a lot of people that the very first thing they want to do, they want for me is, how do I start my business? How do I make more money? My thing is, don't make more money until you first make sure you're taking care of the money that you already get. Otherwise, you'll be throwing good money on bad money habits. You'll be throwing great new money on bad money behaviors. Take care of the money you have first. Now, this that, that process of what I just said, it don't have to take two years. It could take a month. If you get really focused and say, I'm going to get really focused on my money. I'm going to make sure I'm doing the right things first before I really focus on trying to go out and buy some real estate. It takes as long as you want it to take, as long as you make it take. Right. I know that's a different message. Right. Because most people say, hey, I'm going to teach you how to go out and get online and make ten thousand dollars today. But they don't teach you how to handle the money that you're going to make. Right. And that's what I'm telling you. You got to focus on first. And that's how you reach financial freedom sooner. That's going to last. Right. Um, so just, you know, just my thought process on that. Elliot said Elliot Finesse. Oh, that's a good name. I like that name. Elliot Finesse. <laughs> Profits from investments are good but mean nothing if you don't know tax laws that may eat into your profits. Absolutely. Um, excellent point. You got to know tax, what's going on with your taxes, right? In terms of where you are, where you live and so forth. I'm no CPA. Let me just tell you this too. I got a good CPA, right? And in terms of taxes, I talked to my CPA on a number, you know, throughout the year in terms of taxes. And the reason I went out, let me just share this quick story. The reason I went out and got a good CPA is because my eBay business was audited by the IRS. I got audited and I threw a bunch, I threw away a bunch of stuff. Like three, four years later, they came back and said, hey, we're going to audit you back from 2014. And guess what? I didn't have a lot of the stuff because I wasn't smart, right? That's one of my big mistakes I made and I owed the IRS some money. And I had to pay that money. So um, so that's one of the things that happen, guys, is you got to have make sure you have a good CPA or somebody that knows taxes um, without going too in too, too specific um, question. Mommy said, do you talk to your family and friends about money? Um, great question. Sometimes when you talk to family and friends about money, um, no, the answer to that is no, unless they ask. OK, I don't get into a lot of conversations with money, with family and friends unless they ask and we have that conversation. Then we have that conversation. Money and relationships are very funny, right? When people know you have money um, or people have an idea that, you know, sometimes people won't ask you. You know, you, there's a lot of other emotions that come with money and family. And and and, uh, and uh, so do I talk to money? Yeah, sometimes I talk to some family members about money, but if they don't want to talk, you don't have to be around me and talk about money, right? So it's not required that I, I don't want to hang around those people because they don't talk about money. No, not at all. Listen, money is, again, we, we put, don't put money on a pedestal. Money is not the most important thing in the world. Money is one tool, right? Money is a piece of currency and it's currency because it needs to move in order to grow, right? You move like water. So money's money's currency. It's a tool. It's not the most important tool. You, I, you, I, you don't have to be around me to, 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 and talk about money all the time. No, but so I don't talk to family and friends about money unless they want to have conversations about money. Um, I don't loan, I don't loan money to family or friends, right? My rule is not to loan money. My rule is to give money. I'm a big believer in giving and helping, right? So I will give you money if you family and friends, right? I will give you money if you, uh, I'll give you what I have and what I what I can spare at the moment. I'll give it to you. You don't have to pay me back because money changes relationships amongst people. I really strongly believe that. And if you ever loan somebody money in your family, your friends, and they never gave it back, you understand what I'm saying by that. Um, uh, Brandy said, question, thoughts on preference of a HELOC versus a cash out refi um, on an investment property? HELOC or cash out refi? Um, neither. Well, let me not say neither. I'm not a big HELOC guy. All right. Cash out refi is OK, depending on how much equity you have in the property. If you got two hundred thousand dollars of equity in property, and you want to pull out fifty thousand um, dollars. You want to get a loan on it, pull out. 50, 
Great. Cool. Use the cash out refi on, on your investment property. Um, I'm actually going to pay my investment properties off because as I get older and older, I'm at the point where I, I really don't want to have a, have any debt. Right now, I have a, a, some mortgages on my rental properties. I want to go ahead and pay that off. So I'm in a little different boat. But a cash out refi, if you have a good amount of, of equity, is not bad. Okay, depending on there's a lot of other factors that depend on that, how old you are, where you're at, what you want, what you ultimately want. Um, what's the in, the monthly income that that property is generating? So those type of questions we dig in on my one on ones, guys, and have those those questions. But that's a great question, though. Um, Okay, um, I'll be trading early. Let me see if there's any more questions. Yep, asking you a question. Sorry, how would you invest a lump sum of 21K in South Africa and earn very little? I saved this over the years, over a number of years. Good question. First thing I would do, that's a conversation we'd have on a one on one, but make sure you have some emergency fund in case something goes wrong, something crazy happens and you lose everything and you got to have $10,000. Make sure you have some money, right? Money valuations are different in America than they may be in South Africa where you are. But at the same time, make sure you have some have some emergency. Take your time. Do your research. Don't just jump out there. Don't follow the scams. Do your research and make a good decision. I'd love to have a one on one with you and talk about that, because that's a question that is really pertinent to a lot of variables that I don't know. So um, but there's ways to invest it. But just make sure you have a safety net, too, at the same time. Um, plus Ultra. Thank you, Plus Ultra. I appreciate that. Uh, multifamily real estate. Yes. CLM. I love multifamily real estates, right? Because you consolidate everything under one roof, but it's a little more labor intensive when you have, when you're managing a 10 unit apartment building, it's a lot different than managing a, uh, a single family home or two single family homes. Um, but I, I'm all for multifamily real estate suggest, uh, uh, things as well. You duplexes, triplexes, small apartment complexes, all those things. Great. Um, there's some things to think about, right? What Think about you know, your numbers when you're dealing with multifamilies, right? Uh, without going too deeply into it on this, on this live here, just look at your numbers. Make sure your numbers make sense. Make sure the terms of the loan make sense and all that good stuff. Um, let's see here. Um, and I might skip one or two. I don't know, guys. Help me if I do, or you can go back and re-ask it. Let's see here. I made the mistake with money to talk about God over everything. Yes, I made the the mistake that money talk. Money talk. Yeah, be careful with money and family. Sometimes when you talk about money and family, as I said, it can be a problem. Uh, Coconut Creek, Florida. All right, good to see you. All right. Salute. Florida's in the house. So, hey, guys, on this live video, I'm going to do these uh, on Saturdays because I think next Saturday or coming up soon, I'm going to talk about um, I'm going to talk about uh, some real estate and some things like that. But give you guys a chance to ask me questions because you see my videos and I want you to know that, hey, I'm a real human being that uh, has grown money over the years through my mistakes. And I try to help people reach their financial freedom as well to reach back and say, hey, if all you can do is watch all of my videos on, on YouTube, then just do it. That'll give you a good, solid, basic foundation of where to go with money and how to go with money. Right. And 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 how to build your wealth in a common sense way. That's not uh, it's not fancy. It's not flashy. It's not um, it's not anything. I'm not going to be standing. I'm not going to you'll never see me with a Rolex watch on. You'll never see me with, you know, anything You're standing next to a brand new uh, Porsche. Right. It's just not the type of person I am. Um, I believe in being humble. And I also believe that, you know, you don't show all your wealth. It's not necessary. I'm also not going to ask you to join my twenty thousand dollar weekend boot camp. That's not me either. No need. Um, again, I do one-on-ones with people because it's my time. I spend 90 minutes to two hours talking with people, doing one-on-ones. I do charge for that. But also free 15-minute conversation. Sometimes those 15 minutes uh, conversations go 14 minutes. Sometimes they go 16 minutes. But I usually try to cut it off right at 15 because it's my time. So, And as I grow, I may change that. It may be five-minute conversations, 10-minute conversations. Who knows? But and uh, But – Typically, in this video, in the notes below the description, you'll see a way to contact me for a one-on-one, a 90-minute conversation, and you'll also see a way to contact me for get on my schedule for a 15-minute uh, conversation as well. So you'll see both of those in the description box. Also, guys, I like to say this. Make sure that you smash the like button, but don't forget to also share the video, right? If you think somebody needs to hear this Q&A, it's been a long one, an hour and a half. If somebody needs to hear this Q&A, guys, 
feel free with sharing this video with them and saying, hey, here's some here's a guy that shares basic information on the on the on the Internet about money and how he grew his money and how to reach financial freedom. You might give it a listen. And I appreciate that, guys. When you share it, it helps push the video out to more and more people. All right. A couple more question. If you pay off your mortgage, will you still buy home insurance? You betcha. Elsa asked that question. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to keep uh, insurance on my properties just in case. Um, question from Marcus. Why do you think certain people see uh, see a Rolex or other luxury item as an investment? Um, I don't know. Um, the flash catches people people's eye. The flash is what catches people's eye and it brings more people to view. And people just we live in a world of excess and a world of stuff and materialism. And because of that, if you people think that if you have the most material or you have the most expensive material, I want you, I want what you have. So let me listen to you. Not realizing that it could all be a farce. It could all be a just a big old you know fake. These things could be leased, right? Um, and somebody else, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate that. Listen, guys, I'm going to jump off. It's been a long one. I appreciate you guys more than you know. I appreciate you guys being on this live. And on Saturdays, look for these lives because we're going to do them more often because I want to come on here and have dialogue with you guys. I want you guys to be able to ask me questions, um, just general questions or questions about the topic, whatever we're talking about, or questions about myself and my journey um, because I'm a human being, guys. And uh, I've, like I said, I've made a lot of mistakes, but I want to teach you and show you guys and talk to you guys um, and give you information to help you avoid the mistakes I've made right over the years. Right. Um, so that's that's the whole point of my channel. Um, and uh, that's why we're here. And I always say at the end of every single video, my every single ninety nine point nine percent of my videos, I always say this, guys, um, make sure no, I won't go there yet. First, check out. I'm going to put a few videos here. I'm going to put these on here. I'm going to put a few other videos that you could check out as well on this channel um, at the end of this. But I always say this, guys. The best person who's going to take care of the old you, when you get to be 60, 65, 70, 75, the best person is not your grandkids. It's not your government. It's not the nursing home. The best person who's going to take care of that old you and buy food for that old you and pay for utilities for that old you. And take that old you out to that nice restaurant. The best person to take care of the old you is the young you, the you today, the you right now. Guys, take care of yourself and always, always look out and take care of other people as well. All right. Until the next video. Peace.